Hey everybody and welcome back uh, and today I am super duper excited because today we are doing our first tasting in channel history. Yay! <laughs> Over the last handful of months, you all have seen us traveling around, hunting whiskey, finding whiskey, buying whiskey, and of course, uh, that is all going to continue, but now, it only really makes sense that we have the new space, uh, and we have a pretty great collection growing here, and we've waited to really open a lot of them uh, to try some whiskey. And I'll tell you, today we have a really interesting new bottle and bond straight rye whiskey from the Las Vegas uh, whiskey maker, Smoke Wagon. Um, I have not really been able to find a lot of different reviews on this or a lot of information on it for that fact. Um, so I'm really interested to taste it and see how it tastes. And moreover, uh, henceforth, furthermore, we are going to try to figure out, uh, based on the flavor and the taste, um, what is the ideal price point uh, to find that, uh, as to whether or not uh, it's overpriced or not, and uh, what should be the ideal price, uh, which is going to be, <laughs> I guess, interesting uh, and sort of experimental, to say the least. Now, of course, before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all of you folks out there who tune in and who watch these videos. It is really just truly amazing to have you all a part of our, our small, definitely small, but growing whiskey community in our own little corner of YouTube. Moreover, it's really great to get your perspective and comments uh, on whiskey and whiskey hunting and the crazy pricing and all the availability stuff about where uh, whiskey is, uh, where you're at, um, because that definitely changes from one side of the country or one side of the world to the other. Uh, I know we got some folks, shout out to those folks in Belgium. <laughs> now, uh, if you do like these videos and you want to see more of the wonders, more of the price comparisons and more of the reviews, please. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification button so you can get updates when my newest videos come out. Because let's face it, it is great for the channel, it's good for the algorithm, and it might even win you a little bit of favor with the whiskey gods. All right, one last time. Thanks again, and let's get down to it. All right, so first things first, uh, before we get any further down the road here, let's get this bad boy opened and take a whiff and see what those initial thoughts are going to be. Take a look. That's a good looking bottle, huh? <laughs> Even there. It's kind of got a, almost got like a tequila vibe to it. Let's see if we can get the sound. Oh, it's got the, the plastic on it. Boy, got the child lock on it. All right, let's see if we can get the sound off this one. <laughs> Just a very nice sound. Gotta love that, huh? Just a little bit for there, a little bit there. You can take a look at that. The color on it is actually really interesting. It looks very different than what you see um, in the, when you see it in the bottle. You can see it in there, maybe over there too. It's got a nice kind of amber color to it. Like you'd see some ancient mosquitoes or something stuck in there. That is real nice. Hmm. Wow. All right, well now uh, let's wait and get a little bit of air into that one. Let's see uh, how that changed a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about this smoke wagon rye. Uh, whiskey. So Smoke Wagon as a whole is definitely uh, a relatively new whiskey company, especially a great one to watch. Um, they are new in the whiskey world and I think they really are part of that new age whiskey type um, that is on the current leading edge of where whiskey is going. I think that this epic of whiskey, this epoch of whiskey is going to be defined by these styles of whiskeys. Um, they are not really to the point where they are large enough to be distilling their own whiskey for the most part. Um, but they are really finding some great and interesting ways to blend whiskey uh, with different mash bills and different ages to get some new and super interesting and experimental types of whiskeys. Hmm. Now the Smoke Wagon Rye is uh, one of those new types of whiskeys, definitely. And previously the Smoke Wagon Rye, uh, they had a version of it that was very allocated. It was very expensive and very quite elusive. Um, but I think this one, hopefully, if people like it, and judging from the more kind of professional looking label on it, if you take a look at that there, 
Um, you know, it's not, there's no handwriting on it. It's not a prototype experimental kind of thing where everything is kind of just put together. Um, you know, looking at the kind of professionalism and the formalization of it, I'm hoping that this becomes a standard line, uh, again, if people like it and if, uh, you know, Smoke Wagon decides to do it. Now, the pricing on the Smoke Wagon is pretty varied, and there are not a lot of places that I've seen it available yet. Uh, this one specifically, I got it for uh, $69.99 uh, in uh, the Silver State, that is Nevada, on my last trip to Las Vegas. Um, but when I do look at the prices in general, you can see that uh, on the low end, I mean, you can find it, at least here in LA, for as low as $64.99 when it's available, which it is not. Um, at one of my local whiskey uh, places. And uh, you can also find it, I mean, as high as $102, which seems kind of the, the highest reasonable one. There's also obviously absurd ones that are like $200 or $175, but those aren't realistic. Um, so there's a, a good discrepancy in, in totality. Uh, Total Wine and BevMo, they don't seem to really have it in stock at the moment, so it's hard to get prices from them on it as well. So that being said, uh, again, if we take a thumbnail average of the three prices, uh, it comes out to an average street shelf price of uh, $79.32. Um, and yeah, that may not seem important right now, but it is going to be super important when we look at how much this bottle is actually going to be worth at the very end when we figure that out. So let's take a look at the notes here on the nose. Hmm, definitely get some sweetness. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we got on the nose here, what I got on the nose at least. Um, and at that initial smell, it really smells great. It's, it's quite enjoyable. Um, and, uh, you know, I get a full body kind of a caramely goodness. Uh, there's definitely some rye spice uh, with some hints of cinnamon that I, I <laughs> are there. It almost kind of smells like uh, Christmas cookies in, in, a, in, a, in a very sweet way. Uh, also, you know what? I got like a little bit of a, you know what? Uh, I'd say like a dry tinder, maybe like a, like a, a dry tinder or Maybe if you were in like a, a hayloft somewhere, it's kind of got that smell to it, and you can definitely get some of that like cornness to it. It's corn. <laughs> it's get some of that cornness to it. So, I think on the nose, that is a a very enjoyable nose. And uh, as I started drinking more and more rye, I think that's a commonality. There's just a, a deeper um, like physicality to it. I guess I wouldn't know how to describe it. So. Uh, we'll come back to that on the nose here when we get to the score, but that uh, it's definitely enjoyable. All right, so now uh, let's get to the palate, right? Let's see what this actually tastes like. Hmm. Oh. So this bottle specifically, uh, if we're letting that open up and let me get some taste on that. When we talk about this bottle specifically, it does have an ABV of 50%, which obviously would make sense with a uh, bottle and bond. Um, the ABV is standardized, so it's not changing from one bottle to the other. Uh, you do see that on some of the other ones. If you look at like the Smoke Wagon Uncut, Unfiltered, they uh, uh, hand write it in there. Uh, so you can, you know, it does change from a variety of them, but uh, this one specifically, it looks like it is factory set. Hmm. It has a mash bill of 51% rye and 49% malted barley. Um, the distillate, although not uh, specifically stated on it, is probably from MGP out of uh, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Um, but it is blended by Aaron Chepanik, uh, who is a smoke wagon um you know, guru uh, in their facility in downtown Las Vegas. So if you normally go to Vegas and you go to the Strip, it's that other part downtown that uh, <laughs> maybe you don't go to. Um, it's not chilled filtered, uh, so it doesn't, obviously they don't uh, chill filter it, and it does not have an age statement on it. Um, but, you know, so far it definitely doesn't taste young. Hmm. 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 
All right, so after trying it and get a chance to, to get a further taste on that, and, you know, I think it definitely is a little bit thinner than I anticipated, uh, than what I got on the nose. So, not to say that it is all hat and no cowboy, but um, it doesn't have the boldness <laughs> in the taste uh, that it does on the smell, for sure. Uh, as far as sweetness goes, it has a nice amount of sweetness. I think that if you are a standard scotch drinker, you might say it's a little too sweet, um, but for those folks who have a sweet tooth, like myself, um, I think that's a very nice, well-balanced uh, flavor that goes along with it. There's not too much alcohol to it. There's a little bit of it there to be, uh, you know, included, and that's part of the flavor. That's, you know, you drink alcohol because you like the taste of alcohol sometimes. At least I do. Um, and it has a little bit of burn, but it's not really like an alcohol burn. It's more of just like a, like a slight spiciness. Maybe that's more of a rye spice, I guess. And overall, I would give it kind of a medium body. Uh, the viscosity of it is... Um, not, you know, not what I, you know, it's not syrupy, like the flavor gives off, but it gives like a medium viscosity to it. So, uh, I don't know what that is, 34 weight <laughs> that you put in your Honda Civic maybe. Um, but I think that the, it's a nice balance. The whole package together, put together, has a pretty good palate on it. Um, although it seems to be a little bit lacking in, at least for my take, uh, some of the thickness to it. All right. So now last but not least, let's get to the finish. Let's focus on the finish. Focus on the finish. All right, so thinking about uh, the finish here, uh, you know, I think the thinness that we got in the palette really sorts to show through in the end run, right? Uh, that character, I guess we could call it, um, it comes up a little bit short. Uh, there is a pretty quick finish to it as far as it diving off at the very end. And, um, you know, I think that um, another thing is that you get a lot of that sweetness that begins to fade and it starts to get replaced with almost like a, like a bitter chocolate sort of flavor, which again, is not terrible. It's just uh, not that I, the direction that I expected it to go. Um, it fades off as well, so when it drops, it's not necessarily like a instant drop, but it's more of like a, a quick descent, I guess. You know, if you if someone was having a baby on the plane, that's uh, the kind of the angle that it comes in. So, all right, so let's talk about final thoughts and scoring on this bottle and the value of this bottle. Now, before we get to the scores and the thoughts and the and the values and all that kind of stuff, uh, first let's talk about how we actually score this. Um, so what we use uh, is a three category criteria, the nose, the palate, and the finish. Super easy, right? Now, because, um, you know, I don't think that all these things are equal. I don't value the palate in the same way that I value the finish. Uh, so we weighted each of the categories a little bit differently by giving them each a little bit more points or less points. So for example, uh, for the nose, it gets a totality of six points. Uh, for the palette, it has a totality of 15 points. And for the finish, it gets nine points. Um, and for us, we are equal whiskey uh, evaluators. So all whiskey start with the maximum of 30 points. And those points are that whiskeys to keep if they can keep them. All right, so let's talk about the first category, which is nose. And the things that I really liked about it, obviously, are the sweetness, uh, the corniness. I guess he's a, uh, it's a bit corny, uh, as well as the spiciness. And I think it really had a very bold nose to it. Uh, it talked real big talk, um, which ultimately didn't pan out in the uh, in the palate or really in the finish. Um, but on the first sniff, uh, it is quite nice. Now, what I didn't like about it. Um, was that it did miss it wasn't as spicy as I was hoping it would be I do when I get a rye especially uh, You know one that's specifically a rye. I really enjoy that right spice to it. So I think that that is a, a great um, Accompaniment for a rye, but in this case it just wasn't it just wasn't there yet So on the nose I gave this one I took off uh, Basically just one point for that rhinus, uh, which is I uh, so it got a five out of six now for the palate. So the palate's where things get a little bit more complicated because um, you know maybe your sniffer is not that great uh, as mine is, but the the flavor is the palate is something that uh, I really think that uh, I gotten used to and enjoyed. Um, and so on the palate, you know I think up front 
Love the sweetness, love the cornness, love the rye that is there. It seems pretty well balanced, but that thinness definitely takes off at least uh, two points, I think. Um, as well as the, um, you know, I think I would like a little bit more alcohol burn to it. Uh, you know, if I was going to start my own club, it would be the West Coast Fire Breathers, right? I like that whiskey that's over uh, 100 proof and uh, at least tastes like it, even if it's not. So I think I would take off a couple more points for that as well. Um, so I think for the palette, I would give it an 11 out of 15, which is, again, not 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 that, that bad. Um, and then finally for the finish, you know, the finish is where it really falls off. Uh, it's a quick finish, which nobody likes. And, um, you know, I think that thinness kind of carries through. And part of that thinness in the end is that it just doesn't have the oomph, uh, the, the the chutzpah, if you will, to get it through to that final point. So I actually took off, ended up taking off uh, one point for not being, uh, you know, not finishing as quick as I'd like. And then uh, two more points for uh, the sweetness actually not lasting, right? Transferring into that kind of bitterness. Um, it, you know, it literally leaves sort of a bitter flavor in your mouth. All right, so we got the nose for five, the palate for 11, and the finish for six. Um, and then we have one leather score, uh, kind of a little bit of a wild card here, which I like to think of as the wife's prerogative because in love and in whiskey, uh, <laughs> frankly, she has better taste than I do. So let's see what, uh, you know, let's see if she adds any or subtracts any points to this one, uh, frankly, because you can. Minus one. Ouch, minus one. All right. All right, now, uh, so that brings the final score to, drum roll, uh, 21 points. <laughs> and that puts the Smoke Wagon uh, Straight Rye, the Bottle and Bond, at the top of our leader board because, well, of all the whiskeys we've tried, it's the only one. So uh, for right now, it gets, to, it gets to hold on to the top spot. Now comes the tricky part is, is it worth the $69.99 uh, that I paid for it? Or uh, if not, what should it be worth? So this is where we take a little bit of calculation and do some maths. Uh, so if we take the percentage of the score that it got in flavor, so we take 21 divided by 30, which is the totality, that comes out to 70%. Now, if we take that and factor that into the average street shelf price, which we talked about earlier on, at $79.32 times 0.7%, that comes out to a score of $55.52 as the happy medium price about how much this whiskey should cost if we take into consideration the flavor for it. So uh, by this calculation with my $69.99 that I bought it for, uh, it has a difference of $14.47, uh, which I overpaid for, I guess. Uh, that comes out to 20% indifference, um, which still is not that bad considering the inflation and the kind of whiskey world, hype world that we're living in, considering that it's not uh, that easily found at the moment. So I think that's still a pretty reasonable price for it, all things being considered. So if we want to put that onto our whiskey value leaderboard, well, it's still going to be number one because it's the only one. But as we get more, it's going to, uh, we'll see how that shifts around. Now, uh, what I'm really interested in is to also hear uh, what you all think of this review of the Smoke Wagon Bottle and Bond Rye, as well as uh, what you think you would pay for it if you uh, saw it on the shelves, or if you did actually see it, how much uh, you got it for in real life, and uh, what your thoughts are on it if you've tried it. Uh, so leave all that stuff down in the comments. I'd love to hear that. Uh, you know, this is just my perspective. Again, it's not whiskey law. Um, I I'm really interested to see what your kind of perspective on it is. All right, so that's it for today, and I hope that you found this uh, first review uh, interesting and maybe helpful to make a decision of whether you want to try this bottle or not, or whether you should open or not if you already got it. Um, and if you do, uh, you know, like this review, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button um, so you can see all of our updates when we get uh, they come out. And uh, if you like, you know, you want to see more reviews, you want to see more wanders, you want to see more whiskey hunting, um, all that uh, will get you notified when you hit that button when the newest videos come out. So that's it for today. And uh, oh, you know what? Remember, if you do see a whiskey you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will, and it might even be me. All right, have a great rest of your day. Have a great week. I'm out, and adios.